All three girls Della, Dai Han, and Kin Wu Song looked towards Park Jimin. He was sitting in front of the piano, exuding an outstanding charisma. Their gazes began to change, no longer just admiration for his talent, but something deeper and more reverent. The emotions in their eyes became more diverse and profound. System Notification Della Hathaway, Affection Level Increased by 10 Della Hathaway, Affection Level Increased by 10 Current Affection Level, 30 points Dai Han initially criticized, thinking Park Jimin was just playing a few notes for fun. But the more she listened, the more captivated she became, falling completely into a state of infatuation. Each note that Park Jimin strummed felt like arrows piercing straight into her heart. Park Jimin truly is someone who can always surprise me. Only a genius like him could grasp the spiritual root and express it so brilliantly. System Notification Dai Han Affection Level Increased by 5 Current Affection Level 90 Points As for Kin Wu Song, her blood was boiling in her chest, filled with an indescribable intense feeling. Is this really Park Jimin's true level? I thought he was at level 10, but it turns out he's at level 50. The notification system announces, Kin Wu Song's affinity increased by 1, currently at 97 points. The simp lord Kin Wu Song is attracted by the master's talent, stemming from an inner appreciation, breaking through to 97 points. Reward, 10 affinity enhancement points. With 140 enhancement points left, Park Jimin has just completed a stellar performance causing the affinity of all three girls to increase rapidly. Truly, talent ensures one does not suffer losses. A second later, thunderous applause echoed throughout the space, filled with excitement from the restaurant staff. Although it was not a full-fledged concert, the applause was still quite lively. However, right at the peak moment of ecstasy, while everyone was still immersed in the aftertaste of the music, the assassin had locked onto the target. Bam! A bullet suddenly flew straight from the building across the street, shattering everything in an instant. Indeed, it was a life hanging by a thread, taut as a bowstring. Park Jimin had just bowed, looking extremely suave, just like a true gentleman. Just at that moment, a bullet from a heavy sniper rifle whizzed past Park Jimin's head, barely three centimeters away. It felt as though the goddess of luck had chosen him, allowing him to escape in an instant. A loud explosion rang out behind him as the bullet pierced through three thick walls, ultimately shattering a precious 1982 Levy bottle into countless fragments. From here, the chaos truly began. The staff members scrambled in panic, running everywhere, the sound of screams ringing out like a market in disarray. Oh my God, so scary. Call 110, report to the police immediately. My God, it's a sniper. There's an assassin in the building across trying to kill someone. The trio of Della, Dai Han, and Kin Wu Song also began to feel stunned. The loud cries of those around them were enough to make their hearts race, especially since it was an assassin. In an instant, the panic grew even more overwhelming. Breathing became heavy, and fear crept into their minds. Park Jimin's eyes narrowed, his mind immediately weighing the situation before him. Am I being assassinated? In my dreams, I think. With the ability to react 15 times faster than the average person, a strong spirit and absolute sensitivity to my surroundings, I can see the trajectory of the bullet as it rushes towards me. This is not just luck. When the bullet was fired, I quickly calculated, bowed my head to the audience while dodging with a lightning-fast reflex. I thought further. Not only that, I even wondered if I could perform a barehanded bullet catch like in those action movies. Of course, if it were a bullet from an ordinary six-shooter, I might give it a try, but a bullet from a heavy sniper rifle is different. Its power could penetrate armored vehicles, so it's best not to take the risk of trying. After that, Park Jimin stared at the Shuangze building. The marksman on the other side, seeing that he had missed his target, quickly withdrew without firing a second shot, perhaps not wanting to play another round. He knew that firing another shot would surely lead to his capture. He thought, the distance from the Shuangzai building to Imperial Capital is about 800 meters. He thinks, being so far away, with so many people passing by, even if I wanted to chase after the sniper, it would just be a waste of effort. Not to mention, the surrounding environment is too complicated. Is the position I'm sitting in to play the guitar truly coincidental, or has it been calculated in advance by the Shuangzai building? What's more, this guitar was suggested for me to play by Della Hathaway. Why did she request that? 
Just because she saw a video of me playing on the internet, it sounds so awkward. Della, this girl is really suspicious. Just as Park Jimin is contemplating, Ken Wu Song shouts in panic. Park Jimin, what's wrong with you? Lie down, find a place to hide quickly, or you might get shot now. Park Jimin replies calmly, without a hint of worry. It's okay, I'm still intact. I've been very lucky since I was a child. Bullets usually never hit me. So while everyone else is in a panic, Park Jimin walks around defiantly and doesn't forget to wave his hand to order. Server, bring me something to eat. Wait, are you planning to order food or call for a bullet to the head? Just return to the dining table. Dai Han anxiously asked, staring at Park Jimin without blinking. Park Jimin, are you okay? Being shot at right through the head, and yet you're still in the mood to order food. Park Jimin replied, I just stood waiting for about a minute, but the other side remained silent. It seems the sniper really has escaped. It's a pity he didn't fire again, which would have allowed me to follow his trail. Besides, I also thought about the fact that if I chased him down, you and Kin Wu Song might be in danger, so I had to stay behind. Kin Wu Song couldn't help but bang the table in anger. Who on earth is so bold? This is the imperial capital, and they're daring enough to shoot heavy sniper rifles. They really don't care about the sky at all. So arrogant. Not only arrogant, but they must surely be terrorists, with no regard for the law whatsoever. The hotel manager, upon hearing this, quickly stepped in to calm everyone down. Everyone, please stay calm. The police are on their way. There's no need for anyone to panic. Kin Wu Song comforted Della, saying, Die, die, are you okay? Don't worry, the police will be here soon. Della softly replied, Thank you, I'm fine. Park Jimin furrowed his brows, walking slowly but heavily. His cold gaze locked onto Della as he asked bluntly, Miss Della, you are Bloody Rose, aren't you? The sniper just now was arranged by you, wasn't it? If you've already shot, then why act anymore? Just lay it all out, don't hide anything further. Della's face turned flustered upon hearing this, Mr. Park, I, I don't understand what you mean. Park Jimin squinted, unable to contain his irritation. Still acting, huh? Keep it up. The position I was sitting in while playing the guitar just happened to be a spot easily shot from the building across the street. I have reason to suspect that you deliberately arranged for me to sit there to make me a target for the sniper. If I hadn't been lucky enough to bow to everyone at just the right moment, my head would have exploded like a watermelon by now. Upon hearing this, Kin Wu Song was left speechless. An international superstar as a killer. What kind of joke is that? Dai Han frowned, agreeing with Park Jimin. Although the idea of a world-class star turning into an assassin seemed a bit off, Della's recent actions were indeed suspicious. Moreover, Della clearly looked frightened, trembling like a scared cat. At a glance, it would also be a bit off to say she was an assassin. Immediately, Della's manager rebutted angrily. On what basis do you suspect Della of being an assassin? Della is an international superstar. Why would she turn to assassination? Do you think she is so broke that she needs to become an assassin? What you just said is downright laughable. I think you should see a psychiatrist. There might be an issue there. While speaking, Della's manager gestured to the bodyguards surrounding them. The towering bodyguards, over two meters tall with bulging muscles, immediately surrounded Park Jimin. Although he stood at 1.85 meters, in front of these men, he looked as tiny as a little bunny next to a telephone pole. The atmosphere grew tense as if a major battle was about to unfold. At this moment, Della changed her demeanor, her voice sweet yet full of worry. Mr. Park, you must have misunderstood me. Della continued speaking. I truly don't understand why you think I am an assassin. I don't know if someone wants to kill you, and I sincerely apologize for putting you in danger. This is my fault. I am really sorry. As she spoke, Della bowed at a 90-degree angle, her expression earnest, her tone full of remorse even a bit aggrieved. Her legs trembled slightly as if she were afraid. An ordinary person might not notice, but Park Jimin with his keen eyes detected something unusual. Della is clearly very frightened yet tries to appear composed. If Della is Bloody Rose, the fifth-ranked assassin in the world, then such a weak mentality makes me really reconsider. How could she complete difficult missions and eliminate 36 targets while trembling like this? But then, his thoughts continued to create a conflict. If Della is not an assassin, then why are there so many coincidences? 
Coincidentally meeting at Yenchen University. Coincidentally asking me for directions. Coincidentally her mask fell at just the right moment when the wind blew. Then coincidentally holding my hand at the performance. And coincidentally she appears right here. While I was playing the guitar, a bullet flew straight at my head. He thinks. So many coincidences. Who would believe this? Thinking this, Part Jimin spontaneously comes up with a hypothesis. Unless she has an identical twin sister, and she's just using her looks and status to approach the target. Then waiting for her twin sister to show up and carry out the assassination while the target is unsuspecting. So when she performs in Sydney, thousands of kilometers away, an old man in Tokyo gets assassinated without anyone suspecting her. Because there's perfect alibi evidence. Even though I have no specific proof, one thing is certain. Della Hathaway and Bloody Rose are related. Either this girl is genuinely cooperating with the real assassin, or this knave girl is just a pawn being used. While Park Jimin is still reasoning like a detective, Dai Han gently reminds him, Don't get too worked up, the police are on their way. Park Jimin raises an eyebrow, looking completely calm, and replies, Who's getting worked up? I'm very alert right now. Then he turns back to Della with a gentle smile. Miss Della, I'm really sorry, I was a bit suspicious earlier. Being assassinated multiple times has made me somewhat rash. I hope you can understand. Della gently nodded, her voice softer. Mr. Park, I understand why you might doubt me during the day at Yenshin University. I did ask you for directions. Park Jimin replied frankly and profoundly. Of course, I'm not someone with such a poor memory that I would forget immediately. Della continued, her gaze earnest. I understand that you might think I approached you on purpose, but everything was truly just a coincidence. God must enjoy orchestrating such coincidences. In fact, I once thought you were a paparazzi or an obsessed fan following me, but then my assistant mentioned that you are Chairman Lim, a person famous throughout Nation H with a trillion dollar fortune. It was then that I started viewing you differently. She emphasized, I'm serious, today has been filled with many coincidences. But I mean no harm. If I had malicious intent, how could I expose myself this much for people to be suspicious? After hearing this, Park Jimin began to see some logic. If Della truly were a top assassin in the world, would she act so recklessly? An assassin encountering coincidences like this continuously would be equivalent to revealing her actions. Just by stretching the time a little, a few days apart, everything would seem far less suspicious. And Ninja. It is true that from this perspective, Della does seem innocent. Part Jimin smiled gently, nodded, and replied politely, Miss Della, you are quite straightforward. I believe you are not deceiving me. Not long after, the police arrived at the scene. With a luxurious place like this restaurant, and involving an international superstar like Della, along with the god richest chairman Lim like Part Jimin, as well as Miss Kin family and Miss Dai family, of course, the police could not be negligent. Despite the importance placed on the situation, the outcome was disappointing. The police searched everywhere in the Shuang Zai building, but that night they did not obtain anything significant and naturally did not find the sniper. Adding to the time taken from when the police began to secure the area to when they inspected the scene, they had spent over half an hour. By this time, the sniper had probably gone home to sleep under a blanket, no longer waiting to be caught. Moreover, given the extremely important status of Park Jimin, the leaders even propose. After a night of searching, we have also discovered a heavy sniper rifle, but the person has long been out of sight. Additionally, we will assign someone to protect you for 24 hours. Park Jimin eagerly cooperated, saying, Thank you very much, we feel safe with you here. Could you tell me how many people have been assigned to protect us? Hearing this, the police officer nonchalantly raised two fingers and replied, Just two. And Della Hathaway is also considered a victim in this case. After our preliminary check, she is not suspected and has 12 special agents protecting her 24 hours a day. Upon hearing this, Park Jimin nearly spat out blood. I am a trillionaire about to make the Forbes list, yet the police only assigned two plainclothes officers for my protection, while Della has 12 special agents. What is this? Am I not worth more than a movie star? It seems she is being taken care of even better than heads of state. Nevertheless, Park Jimin still managed to force out a reluctant smile, seemingly very unwilling. Is it really possible that there are only two people for protection when it comes to a matter of life and death? However, the police refused to comment. Shortly after, 
Park Jimin, Della Hathaway, Dai Han, Kim Woo Song, and the hotel manager along with the service staff were all successively called into the police station to provide their statements. Della's meticulous protection has its advantages. Being safeguarded is akin to being under constant surveillance. Given she's an international superstar, the police sit there like gods who would dare to attempt assassination or hatch any dark schemes in their presence. They'd probably be invited for tea before they could even make a move. It wasn't until 6 a.m. that Park Jimin, along with Dai Han and Kin Woo Song, returned to the hotel to rest after a stroll at the police station. Early in the morning, just as they arrived at the hotel, Park Jimin hadn't even had a moment to rest when his phone rang. Looking at the screen, he saw it was a call from Yu Ling Shuang. He yawned lightly as he answered, Xiao Yu, any lead yet? Yu Ling Shuang revealed, her voice tense, Boss, Zhang Jun and Wang Chao, their identities have been clarified. Upon hearing this, Park Jimin instantly woke up. Really? Yu Ling Shuang continued to report. Both of these men are notorious tycoons. One was a shareholder of Star Group, and the other was the former vice president of the Mai Yuan Business Association. However, both gentlemen have passed away. Zhang Jun died in a car accident five years ago, while Huang Chao suddenly collapsed and died in his villa three years ago. She continued. The suspicious thing is that both of these individuals have previously been involved in business dealings with Jin Wang Zun, the father of Jin Jiamu, the current president of the Mai Yuan Trade Association, and the head of the Li family. Park Jimin furrowed his brows and asked, Jin Wang Sun. That's right, boss. Yu Ling Shuang confirmed. Park Jimin nodded. Guide. Vending realized the issue and couldn't help but feel frustrated. This guy is the type who brings trouble wherever he goes. The information that Xiao Yu gathered isn't much, and there's no clear evidence to accuse Jin Wang's son of being behind this incident. But I'm not the police. I don't need evidence. Just a gut feeling is enough to know that this guy definitely has issues. According to the top secret files from the dark web, both Zhang Jun and Wang Chao were staged in accidents. And how coincidental that after Jin Jiamu's fall from grace, I suddenly find myself on the international assassin's wanted list. This is bad. Jin Wang's son cannot be innocent. Couldn't it be that he's the one behind the bounty on my head? This old man has money. A few billion is nothing to him. As for Zhang Chen Yu, no matter how wealthy he is, he can't possibly throw around a few billion to put a price on my head. Thinking it over, Park Jimin suddenly saw it more clearly. The only person who can and has enough money to do this, apart from Jin Wang Zun, is no one else. This old man is really asking for trouble. In the past, I didn't even pay attention to the Lee family, treating everything as just a business game. But the old man dared to put a bounty on my head. I play fair, but the old man has broken the rules. So don't blame me for going all out. Thinking of this, Park Jimin immediately instructed, Xiao Yu, listen carefully. Spare no expense, suppress the entire Li family company. I want their stocks to plummet. Yu Ling Shuang, on the other end of the line, almost fell over, her voice filled with worry. Boss, doing that could cost us quite a bit too. Park Jimin sneered. It's okay, I'll transfer another 500 billion to you. The goal is to ensure the Li family goes bankrupt. Upon hearing this, Yu Ling Shuang immediately dropped her phone to the ground in shock. In her mind, she began to whirl. Transferring an additional 500 billion, that's a lot of money. Before this, Park Jimin had already spent a fortune on various projects, from film and pharmaceuticals to major media conglomerates like Young Sil. He even invested in recap TV and manga apps. The amount spent so far has exceeded 6 trillion, and that doesn't include the fact that Park Jimin has contributed to charity funds, built hospitals, schools, and a bunch of other miscellaneous expenses. In total, I calculate it has surpassed 10 trillion. But now, Park Jimin says he can transfer another 500 billion right away to defeat the Lee family. The boss truly doesn't play unless it's all in. When he plays, he plays to the end. Xiao Yu, while filled with curiosity inside, also knew. I'd better not ask any further. Some things are better left unknown. Then, while Yu Ling Shuang was still figuring out how to implement the plan, she turned back to look at her phone screen and was startled. A transfer notification appeared with a dizzying array of zeros. Dane, your account ending in 5678 has just received 500 billion. Please check again. Staring in disbelief, 
All she could feel was fear upon fear. 500 billion? Oh my god, it changed hands in less than a minute. The boss is really going big. At first, she thought to compare Park Jimin to Jin Jiamu. But now, she realized she had made a huge mistake. Jin Jiamu. No chance. Compared to Park Jimin, Jin Jiamu isn't even worth a fraction. Not to mention Jin Jiamu, even his father, Jin Wang Zun, doesn't stand a chance against my boss. Had I known my boss was this formidable from the beginning, I wouldn't have needed to be so careful or prepare so many things. With this kind of money, if the boss wanted to buy the entire city or even divine cinema, it would be a piece of cake. The more Yu Ling Shuang thought about it, the more confident she felt than ever before. She quickly regained her professional demeanor and said, Boss, I have one more thing I want to report. Yu Ling Shuang continued to report, Boss, regarding your private satellite, I found a supplier. The cost for one satellite is around $2 billion, including the satellite, rocket, insurance, and operational fees. Park Jimin, after hearing this, did not seem surprised or take long to think. He responded nonchalantly, only two billion? Then just buy ten for me. Make it quick. Yu Ling Shuang was taken aback for a few seconds, but nodded to follow the order. Yes, boss. Adding ten more satellites is no big deal. With the five hundred billion you just allocated, buying satellites for you is like buying a bunch of vegetables at the market. My boss, whenever he buys something, only complains that it's too cheap and never finds it expensive. After hanging up the phone, Park Jimin opened his laptop and started working. Recently, he had been glued to the screen, typing away at programming. The reason was that Park Jimin was nurturing a programming project aiming to replace the dark web, a hidden web that he decided to take over and hack clean. It sounds serious, but for Park Jimin, this hacking issue is as normal as eating broken rice. It's simply about writing some code, jumping into the system, and creating a new website to welcome all the hitmen from the dark web to his server. After all, this task is not easy at all. The immense workload left even Park Jimin, who has a brain that can be considered divine, admitting that he couldn't handle it all by himself. Therefore, he thought of creating an artificial intelligence sequence to help him deal with all the tough tasks, saying it is easy, but doing it is hard. Because the current AI system has only reached the level of a three-year-old, as smart as a child just learning to walk, and to manage an entire dark web, at least his AI must reach a ten-year-old level, meaning it should have some understanding, be able to do homework, and have the capability to solve difficult problems on its own. Park Jimin chuckled to himself, envisioning a scenario. If my AI is both smart and quirky, those clueless hackers won't know which way to turn. At this moment, he also planned to create 10 satellites to support the expansion of his AI system's power. Part Jimin imagined that, when he has enough 10 satellites in hand, his system will be a hundred million times more powerful, to the point that it can operate autonomously without the need for any engineers to manage it. Then he wouldn't have to worry about security, because the entire dark web would fit neatly in his pocket. And if there were any complex techniques that had yet to be resolved, it wouldn't matter because Park Jimin could always upgrade his hacking skills by himself. He was confident in his abilities. Hacking the dark web was as simple as breakfast, nothing more, nothing less. Park Jimin was sitting there, crunching numbers, unaware that from head to toe, every move he made was under the watchful eye of a formidable figure. This person was observing Park Jimin, while confidently asserting, the name Park Jimin escaping a bullet is beyond my expectation. I don't know if he got lucky or if he has some trick that I haven't discovered, but it doesn't matter. This time, he won't get away. In Nation H, there is a proverb that says, I will act when the enemy is at their most careless. He thinks that having special forces protecting him makes him safe, but this is when he is at his weakest. Today will be his last day. But there is one thing that no one expected. Bloody Rose, the one whom the world still believes to be a cold beauty, with a murder style full of artistry, in reality, Bloody Rose is just a fat and ugly man. The entire international assassin community has been deceived, much like the story of a notorious bandit named Zhang the Pockmart. Everyone believes his face is covered in scars, but in truth, his skin is smoother than that of a baby. Don't be too pleased. This is just the warm-up. As soon as Plan A fails, Plan B is immediately activated. That is the specially concocted poison, hidden in bottles of purified water. Each bottle is carefully sealed, 
showing no signs of tampering, ensuring that everyone believes this water is absolutely safe. Who would stay awake all night without taking a sip of water? Who would think that the clear bottle, unopened, could contain poison? Part Jimin is still busy with his computer, typing away for two straight hours. Finally, he stops, seeming a bit thirsty. He reaches for the bottle of water next to him, twists off the cap without a second thought. The cap is still pristine. Untwisting it produces the sound of plastic being removed, guaranteeing absolute safety. Part Jimin took a sip confidently, unaware that he had fallen into a trap. But as soon as he drank, he felt that something was wrong. A burning sensation coursed through his throat and stomach. Unfortunately, by the time he realized it was already too late, this poison was no joke. Even an elephant would be unable to withstand it, let alone a human. Even if an ambulance were to arrive, it would be useless. In less than a few minutes, Park Jimin began to writhe, continuously coughing up blood uncontrollably. His whole body rolled on the floor, as if it were being burned from the inside. In another room, the fat man wore a sneer filled with disdain. He lazily observed through the control screen, clearly seeing Park Jimin enjoying the bottle of poison with satisfaction. No matter how they try to save him, it will be in vain. Once he encounters poison number 008, even if he is a superhero, there is only one outcome. Death. He thought to himself. So the plan has been completed. I don't need a sniper rifle or a dagger. Just a bottle of purified water is enough to end Park Jimin's life. Park Jimin felt the pain from his stomach rising, immediately shouting in his mind. No, I won't die. System, enhance my physicality by 50 points right now. The system announced, ding, enhancement completed, personal information immediately displayed. Name, Part Jimin, age, 22, height, 1.85 meters, weight, 77 kilograms, strength, 135, physique, 185, spirit, 135, agility, 135, compared to an average person which has a median level of 10, current status, mild stomach pain, humph, just a mild issue, even though I just ingested a toxin that could kill an elephant. In a moment, Part Jimin felt the excruciating stomach pain caused by the poison. But after adding 50 points to his physique, the pain significantly diminished. This poison should be enough to take down an elephant, huh? Sorry, but against Part Jimin, it's just a mild menstrual cramp. After the sense of pain gradually subsided, Park Jimin breathed a sigh of relief. Phew, the power of the system never lets me down. If necessary, I could keep increasing my physique points to completely fend off the effects of the poison. The higher my physique, the better my resistance to toxins. You think you can kill me with poison? You must be dreaming in broad daylight. However, thinking about the work style of Bloody Rose, Park Jimin did not hastily stand up or do anything knowing full well that the enemy would come to visit him sooner or later. He lay still, trying to analyze the situation carefully. Even though this time I carelessly drank the poison water, I still have time to contemplate how the drinking water, which had not been opened, was poisoned in the first place. This bloody rose clearly tracked my schedule, knew that I was under police protection, and even had information on what time I returned to the hotel. He thought, perhaps he's lurking somewhere nearby maybe even right in front of me without me realizing. Bloody Rose could be playing the role of a servant, a protector, or even one of the guests strolling through the hotel, or Della's assistant. With a series of hypotheses and reasoning flashing through his mind, Park Jimin could only draw one conclusion. Wait, could it be that I have been tricked into thinking? Who said Bloody Rose had to be a girl? Why have I kept thinking that way? It's true that I was wrong. Men can also be assassins. Right, this assassin could very well be that unpredictable manager, the one who has been controlling everything around Della. I was wrong to only suspect the beautiful women and forgot about the men. Fine then, if he wants to give flowers, I'll give him a shock even bigger than that. Thus, Park Jimin patiently continued to wait. This assassin had a habit of gifting flowers to his victims after completing a mission. A deep red rose like blood, as if to flaunt his success, and he knew for sure that this guy would come. Sure enough, Park Jimin had just settled in when something interesting happened. A delivery guy wearing a helmet, holding the blood-red rose like the color of blood, walked over. Just as he arrived at room 3602 of Park Jimin, the delivery guy casually knocked on the door. However, before he could hand over the rose, 
a heavy team of police officers suddenly burst in, tackling the young man down as if they had just captured an international criminal. The delivery guy, feeling miserable, was almost in tears. Oh my God, what are you doing? I'm just delivering. I don't have any illegal goods or bombs. A fierce special forces officer shouted, Speak up quickly. Who are you? What are you doing here? The delivery guy panicked and shouted in protest. It's nothing at all, boss. I'm just here to deliver a bouquet of roses. Someone ordered to send it to the president's room 3602, saying it's a surprise. It's just roses. Come on, check it out. There are no bombs. The captain, still somewhat doubtful, glanced at the rose. But this was not an ordinary flower. It was a stunning blood-red rose, beautiful to the point of being terrifying. Immediately, the captain became more vigilant than ever. Oh no, this isn't good. Hurry, knock on the door to check on Mr. Park. The whole team immediately changed direction. The sound of knocking echoed urgently. Mr. Park, are you okay? Mr. Park? But no matter how much they knocked, there was no response. The team exchanged anxious glances. A feeling of fear began to spread. No one knew if Park Jimin was still alive or not. Without thinking, the captain shouted, This isn't good. Let's kick the door in. The loud thuds reverberated through the hallway as the police officers kicked the door repeatedly, creating an unexpected tense scene. In less than 10 seconds, the door burst open like in an action movie, and the officers rushed into the room. But before their eyes, Park Jimin lay still, and everyone thought he had met his ancestors after drinking that deadly bottle of water. The captain's face was drenched in sweat. He quickly stopped his subordinates and crouched down to check. Fearing that Mr. Park had encountered something dire, secure the scene, call headquarters for backup, he said, both the forensic experts and the trace examination specialists too. Damn it, they dare to kill right under my nose. Mr. Park, it's my fault. I couldn't protect you. So how can I still call myself a detective? At that moment, Park Jimin suddenly stirred and patted his shoulder, replying, All right, you all just calm down. I'm not going anywhere. The teen leader, still teary-eyed, looked at Park Jimin in confusion. Huh. Then, why didn't you react just now? But just a second later, he jumped in shock, astonished. Ha. Huh. You, you, you were still alive. The group of police officers behind him was also taken aback to see Park Jimin slowly getting up from the floor. This scene was no different than watching a horror movie. Park Jimin replied, as if he had just played hide and seek with death. Yeah, I just like to lie down and think for a bit. As soon as Park Jimin slowly stood up, Bloody Rose in room 3601 seemed almost frozen. His face was blank, as if someone had just dealt him a hard slap. What? How is he still alive? The poison didn't work at all. Even an elephant would die from that. While Bloody Rose was furiously confused, Park Jimin over here calmly opened his laptop, starting to work as if nothing had happened. His fingers skillfully danced over the keys a true hacker in action. He began checking the surveillance camera system around the room. If there were hidden cameras in the room, then these would certainly have to connect to a nearby electronic device to transfer data, as the range of such cameras was usually quite limited, unlike wired devices. As long as he could catch the connecting device, you would instantly know who was behind it. With a hacker skill set like Park Jimin's, this was a simple task. Not only that, but he also took the opportunity to break into the hotel management system, accessing information about the guests who had made reservations. Within just a few seconds, all the information from the cameras to the hotel guest list appeared fully on his screen. Focused Park Jimin scanned the surveillance screen and immediately spotted a hidden ultra-small camera less than three meters away from him. He continued to scroll through the registration list and noticed the name Repri Dowson, Della's manager, in room 3601. Everything was just too perfect, making Park Jimin suspicious that this was a large-scale operation. This camera is the latest type, a technology invented by Nation M, capable of transmitting signals over roughly 30 meters. Rooms 3601 and 3602 are close together, just the right distance of 30 meters. Huh, there's definitely something off. Although the sender of the roses might not have been Bloody Rose personally, as long as I follow the clues, I can still narrow down the suspects more accurately. This time, there's no way they can escape. Just as Park Jimin was calculating everything, Kin Wu Song and Dai Han rushed in from the adjoining room. 
Both of them asked in rapid succession, their voices full of concern. Part Jimin, are you okay? The noise just now startled us awake, and when we looked over, we saw the police all around your room. What just happened? Looking at him is also pitiful. Everyone is tense, feeling around in front and behind. Part Jimin can only scratch his head and smile wryly. The captain stands by, eyes wide open. Ha, huh, how is this guy so fortunate? He was almost assassinated yet still has two beautiful girls by his side caring and inquiring about him like this. Not only do Kin Wu Song and Dai Han possess extraordinary beauty, but they also have a captivating aura that leaves everyone in awe. Park Jimin just smiles gently and replies, It's okay. I just discovered that this bottle of water contains poison after drinking it. As soon as he finishes speaking, Dai Han and Kin Wu Song's faces turn pale as if they've seen a ghost and their mouths are agape as they exclaim, What? Poison? Before the two can calm down, Park Jimin casually takes the bottle, opens the cap, and pours it straight onto the floor. The moment the water touches the ground, it foams vigorously, as if someone has just poured a whole bottle of dish soap onto it. Dai Han gasps in shock, stammering, Oh my gosh, you drank it and aren't scared. Kin Wu Song, equally worried and with a pale face, is about to ask if he plans to meet his ancestors soon. Park Jimin merely shrugs and replies, If it's poison, then it's poison. But let's see if it can take me down. There have been times when Poison saw me and decided to back off. After that, Park Jimin turned to the team leader and seriously said, Officer Jen, please take these bottles for testing and check the cameras from noon yesterday until now to see who has entered and exited my room. While you're at it, please check this room as well. I suspect there may be hidden cameras. I would appreciate it if you could inspect carefully. After using a scanner to check, one policeman shouted, Captain, we found a small camera that matches the color of the ceiling. Luckily, we checked thoroughly. Otherwise, no one would have noticed. The police captain immediately responded seriously. Mr. Park, please rest assured. From now on, the entire hotel will be thoroughly checked. Saying this, the tension on this person's face increased. Thinking about the fact that someone dared to poison right under his nose was truly beyond words. Kim Wu Song and Dai Han exchanged glances feeling a chill down their spines. This killer is really too insidious, daring to play the game of poisoning, right amid the eyes of the special forces, truly bold beyond measure. Bloody Rose stood by the hotel window, looking exasperated as he muttered, I never expected the mission to be this ridiculous. It seems it's time to implement Plan C. Thankfully, nothing is directly tied back to me. Whether the cameras get discovered or my impersonation of the hotel staff gets revealed, there's no way to connect it to me. Even the roses were ordered through Della's assistant, so there are no pieces of evidence pointing at me. Is it possible that the dosage wasn't enough? Thinking back, Bloody Rose felt a twinge of regret and a hint of irritation bubbling up, but he quickly extinguished it as he opened the window and threw his tablet worth several thousand dollars into the lake below. The tablet fell silently without a sound. He merely nodded, pleased with his own perfection. Even if Part Jimin has suspicions, he'll probably think of Della Hathaway first. But how did Bloody Rose know that Part Jimin had identified through the Simp Lord system? He had already ruled Della Hathaway out of suspicion. When there was no Della to blur the view, he began to see through other murky matters. The case became clearer, no longer chaotic. Meanwhile, the police were still scratching their heads in search of evidence. Part Jimin was going big, relying on his intuition to shed light on everything. Nevertheless, in the end, they still could not catch the killer and the police had to regretfully report back to Park Jimin. Right after discovering suspicious activity, we delved deep into the case. But just when we focused on the room service attendant, who had cleaned Mr. Park's room, he had an accident and was out of the game on the spot, ending his life without leaving any traces. Park Jimin asked again with a tone full of skepticism. Car accident dead. The police nodded, then continued to explain. We also organized a hotel inspection rummaging through every nook and cranny to find anyone suspicious, but did not uncover any employee showing any signs of wrongdoing. He continued, The only noteworthy thing is that someone sent him a bouquet of roses, and the name on this bouquet was Della Hathaway, and Della's assistant was the one who ordered it. Afterwards, we went to Della to ask. Della sincerely explained that she saw Mr. Park being attempted to be assassinated, so she sent the rose bouquet as an apology. 
The Roses were just a way to express her regret, so why does everyone think it was an assassination attempt? Hearing what others said, Park Jimin also felt tired, and he asked directly, but everything is still vague. There are no clear signs to reach a conclusion. Hearing that, the police chief smiled bitterly and clarified, there is no evidence to prove she is the perpetrator. Although we also sense something is off, without clear evidence, how can we dare to arrest someone? Moreover, this case involves an international superstar like Del Hathaway, so we must handle it cautiously. Otherwise, it could become a huge issue. Feeling helpless, the police chief regretfully said, Mr. Park, we sincerely apologize, but we will look for more evidence to arrest the assassin. He continued, Oh, the type of poison you ingested has been analyzed. It is an extremely toxic substance with code number 008. Just under one milliliter is enough to send someone to the afterlife. Even though you spat it out, I still advise you to visit the hospital if anything feels off. Park Jimin calmly replied without a hint of fear, I understand that you have your principles, and I am very well aware of that. As soon as he bade farewell to the police and closed the door to his room, a faint smile appeared on his lips, but Park Jimin's eyes were filled with murderous intent. Even though I'm not a police officer, with my innate reasoning skills, I am confident I will bring the mastermind to light, no matter how skilled they are at hiding. I have never liked to take matters into my own hands, especially when it involves people like Bloody Rose, a cunning assassin. Why should I get involved with such cases and tire myself out? With the intention of playing big, Park Jimin decided to use a clever tactic. He entered the dark web, an underground realm online where no one knows who is who, and immediately invested $100 million for this special mission. Park Jimin remained calm as usual, adding Repri Dowson to the blacklist, clearly noting his identity and occupation alongside a verifying picture. Once done, he broke into a gentle smile. Well, let others do it quickly. If we're going to play, we have to play the right way. This is what we call using a stick to hit the man with the stick. After placing the bounty, within five minutes, the dark web erupted in chaos. Everyone was buzzing. Who is working so boldly like this? One hundred million dollars is at stake. Pulling this off would mean a lifetime of profit. The assassins scrambled to take on the mission, all curious about Repri Dowson. This name is not simple at all. He's not just an agent but is also involved with several A-list stars like Della, Angela, and Mina. Another assassin nodded in agreement. Ha! Huh. This guy might even have another identity that hasn't been exposed yet, but it doesn't matter. With such a large sum of money, we have to take action. Just take the money and do the work. Everyone volunteered for the mission, as if heaven had just thrown them a piece of cake. Assassins lingering around Ho Ha, or not too far away, suddenly perked up. Oh my god! Repre is right under my feet. Someone said, This is a golden opportunity. If you don't act, you'll miss out. Just three days. Let's wrap it up quickly. He confidently patted his chest, determined to eliminate Repre before anyone else could. But life is not a dream. Immediately, another assassin reported, Hey buddy, you're late. The mission has already been claimed. And it's $100 million. A sum too tempting. Everyone wants their share. And thus, the mission to hunt down Repri Dewson was launched. A wave of assassins from everywhere began to take action, targeting this objective. Even those who hadn't accepted the mission were waiting like tigers stalking their prey, just waiting for someone else to fail to jump in and take their place. Meanwhile, Repri seemed to have entered a deadly game of which he was completely unaware. Park Jimin stood by watching everything, as if it were a thrilling action movie. I don't need to worry because everything is firmly in the hands of those who want the money, ready to do anything for that $100 million. This truly is a high-stakes game that terrifies the world. At 9 p.m., Repre had just gone through a busy day, wrapping up a pile of work and dealing with a tangled web of brokers. Finally, Repre dragged himself back to the hotel. As soon as he entered his room, he took the opportunity to pull out his phone and check. He logged into the dark web as usual preparing to input his mission card. This was a simple task, but once he accepted a mission, he had to regularly input his card. Otherwise, the dark web would consider the mission a failure and impose penalties. After inputting the card, Repri scrolled through the bounty list for fun. It was no big deal if he didn't look, but once he glanced at it, he was taken aback. Wait, why is my name showing up here? Who did this? Repri froze in shock. The fifth-ranked assassin in the world, 
now had someone putting a bounty on him on the dark web. He became even more alarmed as he scrolled through the forums and saw a multitude of assassins discussing who would take on the mission to kill him and how they would send him to the other side. After reading that, Repre nearly choked on his own blood. He thought, what a paradox, no matter how powerful one is. Nobody expects to become a target one day. Who knows where danger lurks? From that moment, he understood that his life would be intertwined with panic. No different from the prey he had hunted for so long. As he was trying to focus, Repre heard a soft footstep behind him. He turned around quickly, his heart racing. Who's there? He forced himself to take a deep breath, pretending not to be afraid. But it was clear that cold sweat had broken out. Show yourself. Don't play hide and seek anymore. All right, I promise I will behave from now on. At that moment, he suddenly realized he was in the role of the prey, not the hunter anymore. Life had turned too fast, faster than his friend's quick turns when inviting him to eat and then asking him to pay. But when he clearly saw that the person standing there was Kevin, he let out a sigh of relief. Kevin was someone Ripre had personally trained from a young age, specializing in becoming an excellent assassin. He took orders without question and was ready to kill at a moment's notice. Repre absolutely trusted Kevin, whom he regarded as a son, always loyal, and doing everything just as he wanted. Although Repre relaxed, he did not forget to warn. Ah, so it's you, Kevin. But I told you not to come looking for me when there's nothing important. Do you know that showing up like this makes it easy for me to get exposed? Kevin calmly replied, Yes, Daddy, I know. But don't worry, I will arrange a private jet for Daddy to leave here right away. This place is no longer safe. Repri did not need to think much and immediately ordered. That's right, prepare the plane immediately. I need to return to the base safely right away. The longer I stay here, the more dangerous it becomes. But who would have thought the adopted child that Repri trusted the most suddenly pointed a gun at him? In his last moments, Repri still pushed through his extreme fear to ask, Why are you doing this? Kevin just let out a sneer a smile tainted with a bit of bitterness and sarcasm. Why? Ha ha. Before he could even hear the answer, the adopted child had already shot him in the head without blinking. This hotel was soundproof enough that even with the gunfire, no one knew a thing. After taking care of Repri, Kevin continued to speak with a tone full of arrogance. Daddy, for all these years, I've handled all the dirty work. But in the end, all I got were just scraps. Kevin continued. You only need to move your mouth and instantly there are millions of dollars, the infamous Bloody Rose reputation in the assassin world, that I built for you. But in the end, what did I get? No fame, no profit. Do you think this is fair? Kevin went on, his voice calm yet as he. To be honest, the bounty of $100 million is my assignment. Once I kill you, I'll never have to worry about food and bills for the rest of my life. So you can go in peace, Daddy. Ripperee lay there, eyes wide open unable to close them. His whole life, the fifth-ranked assassin in the world, had been brought down so easily, and the one who struck was none other than the adopted son he trusted the most. Until his death, he could not have imagined his fate ending like this. After taking a farewell photo of Repri, Kevin uploaded it straight to the dark web to claim his reward. He just needed to wait for approval, and then the money would automatically find its way into his pocket. Three days passed. Meanwhile, Park Jimin was enjoying a gaming paradise in Yan Jing. During the day, Park Jimin along with Dai Han and Kim Wu Song went to take photos from Chong Cheng, Gu Gong, Yu Yi Yuan to famous universities. When night fell, they visited bars, entertainment spots, and even didn't miss out on well-known places for partygoers. While Park Jimin was enjoying himself, Captain Zheng was worried. His face wrinkled as he reminded, Mr. Park, you have been assassinated twice already. Please don't wander around anymore. Do you know how on edge we have to be to protect you? But Park Jimin's response left Captain Zheng speechless. But I think the most dangerous place is actually the safest one. Before he could respond, a subordinate special agent rushed in to report, Captain, there has been a murder at the hotel. Captain Zheng was startled. What? The famous manager of Della Hathaway has been assassinated. At this point, things began to get more intense. But Park Jimin remained calm, showing no signs of being connected to the death of Repri. Captain Zheng, with a pale face, listened intently while ordering, Investigate immediately. Deploy six more of my men and twelve security personnel for Della Hathaway. He continued, 
Strict surveillance 24 7 Nothing must happen. After learning that Repre was dead, Part Jimin fell into a brief contemplation, his eyes gleaming with thought. So fast to die like that. Immediately, Park Jimin logged into the dark web to check. Indeed, there was a notification confirming the mission's completion, along with a photo of Bloody Rose shot in the head. This assassin works really efficiently. Then, Park Jimin turned to Captain Jang and suggested, Captain Jang, you should take care of that case. I haven't even finished exploring the Imperial Film Academy yet. Captain Jang hesitated for a moment but eventually decided to leave, reminding him, Mr. Park, you absolutely cannot expose your identity. It's best if I come back in an hour. As soon as he noticed the Special Forces team was no longer by his side, Park Jimin felt a sense of relief. Finally, I'm free from those annoying guards. Now all I need to do is leisurely stroll around, enjoying the sight of the girls at the school. But finding the beauty among this crowd might take a while. It won't be easy to encounter a gem. Glancing left and right really is exhausting. Moreover, I have to wear a mask and sunglasses to avoid being recognized. And the more I walk, the more I realize I feel a bit cowardly. But this trip is truly worth it. As soon as he stepped into the Imperial Film Academy, Part Jimin was utterly excited. This is the place where the essence of artistic beauty converges, where all the girls attending are beauties of exquisite charm. Especially in the performing arts classes, there are stunning beauties, with perfect figures and exceptional talents. This academy is indeed a gathering place for national beauties, living up to its reputation as a prestigious institution with top-notch beauty and talent in the entire country. Park Jimin was joyfully speechless, gazing at the girls for a long time, wandering around everywhere to find more fresh faces. Suddenly, an idea flashed in his mind. Why not organize a casting call? It would be easy to select, and it would be public and reasonable in every way. As he thought, he pulled out his phone to call Yang Sison. Are you busy these days? I'm in Yanjing. Right here at the Imperial Film Academy, I'm planning to invest in a show, specifically hunting for the top girls from the best schools.